comments and then I'll let you guys go for the day. All right, let's do this. Any questions on any of that? Everyone seems to be good. All right, so let's do this set of notes and then if you have questions, go ahead and ask me. So we're gonna do average rate of change. This is huge um, because that's what a derivative is. It's the instantaneous rate of change. And so we'll get you ready for that if we can do average rates of change. Um, so hold on, let me pull up something real quick just for me. Perfect, and then we just uh, pop the screen. There we go. All right, so here we have average rate of change. And so here we have um, the average rate of the change of a function between A and B. Um, is given by this formula is the change of f of x over change of x, or so f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Um, and if we were dealing, if we were dealing with lines, what did we what did we call this? If this was a line, the change of this of a change of this, specifically in a line. If someone can give me that answer real quick. Slope, yeah. So this is a slope. So if this is a line, we call this a slope, right? And we also said this was rise over run. I mean, it still kind of works. And so what we have here is the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line between the two points. And the secant line just basically is if I drew the line between those two, what happens? Um, which is the line between f of a and this. And so basically we're just doing lots of slopes today. Uh, for this one. So draw a visual representation of a secant line. Let's see if I can do one that makes All right, so here, as terrible as this sounds, because I, I wanted to make it obvious that it doesn't go through the points. Exactly. So here's B. The actual secant line This is the secant line here. So it kind of ignores the curve a little bit. Um, it's just the line between the two points. Okay, so it just ignores the curve a little bit and it's just the line between the two points. And so that's what a secant line is. Um, and so the average rate of change here would be the slope of this line. And so here, this would be uh, b minus a, and this would be f of b minus f of a, and so here I'd have f of b minus f of a equals b minus a, and that is the slope. It's the slope of that line right there. Okay, and then actually in this case it shouldn't be, well we'll actually calculate a whole bunch of things that we don't all right, so here we're going to calculate the average rate of change for this function. You actually don't need to graph stuff to do this. You can just do it by hand. And so here we're going to have f. We're going to call this a. We're going to call this b just for kicks. So f of, in this case, would be 2 minus f of 0 all over 2 minus 0. So f of two, if we plug this in, gives us the function of, oops, let me actually plug that in. So I'll have two minus two squared minus zero minus two squared all over two minus zero. I simplify that down. That's of course zero squared minus minus two squared Two, and then this becomes minus four over two, so I get minus two. <clears throat> okay. Um, notice here, if we use, let me just do something super fast for you guys. Notice if you label stuff A or B, it really doesn't actually that matter because here, if I swap, if I do f of zero minus f of two over zero minus two, this will give me four over negative two, which gives me negative two. So it ends up being the same. Um, I always just, but I always usually label A and B in such a way that A is less than B, just for my own sake. Here, let's do it one more time. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm gonna do it one more time. I mean, here, I'll actually, here, I'll let you guys try to give me the answer to this real quick. See, see if you can't do this one on your own real quick and see if you can't tell me what the answer is. Um, hopefully you have either your notes handy or a paper handy at least to try it. Um, And see if you, if you guys get this, I'll crunch through the rest of them. So here, I'll actually, I'll set it up for you though. So the f of six minus f of three, all over six minus three. All right, a bunch of people getting five. So I think that's correct. So let's double check it real quick. So, so f of six will be, six minus two uh, minus squared um, three minus two squared all over three. So this becomes four squared minus one squared over three, which gives me 15 over three, which is indeed five. Yep, okay. All right, oh, hold on. People want to write that down, then give me a second to do that. Um, so, yeah, so this ends up being five. And so, if I was going to graph this real quick, just for, for fun, fun to you, here at two would be the vertex. And so, three would be one, which we know. And then, so three, four, five, six. And at six, it's Um, yeah, the value at six is 16. So it's just like, and so the secant line is this right here. And so it has a slope of five. Okay, you don't need to draw that. I just wanted to give time for this. I'm not going to build here. All right, so um, let's go ahead and zoom on here. Um, your notes, <laughs> your notes may not have the T here as it belongs. Please add a T. Um, so calculate an average rate of a falling object. So here's a classic physics problem. Um, this is in feet per second. This has to be in feet per second if it's 16. Um, so what's the average rate, uh, speed of a falling object? So here if an object falls at this rate, so she's falling with gravity. So here it's basically if I was standing, standing somewhere and dropped a rock. <laughs> Right. Um, this this function tells you the distance to the rock fell, and so if we're going to do it for um, between one and two seconds, so we do distance of one minus distance of two, two minus one, and so here if we plug this in, I'll have sixteen times two squared minus sixteen times one squared all over two. This gives me. 64 minus 16. Um, this distance is in feet, just so you know. Oops. This is in feet, so this is in seconds. So minus one six second distance here is going in feet. So our rate of change will be in feet per second as we want. What do they call that unit analysis? No, dimensional analysis in physics. I don't, uh, you may not have even a hard physics class which does that yet. Um, over one, so this equals 48 feet per second. Oops, that is not a second. Okay, so this is how you do that. Here, this is the more interesting one. This is what you're actually going to do in calculus, and so you'll actually do a couple of these um, for homework. So here, I'm going to have f of a plus h minus f of a all over a plus h minus a. This should look extremely familiar because once I simplify this real quick, you'll have f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Okay. Um, we'll actually plug that in. So here I'll get 16 a plus h should be a plus h squared minus 16 
quantity of a squared, and then maybe extra a squared all over h, which is equal to 16a squared plus 32ah plus 16a minus, I didn't leave myself enough room, or that's h squared, 16a squared divided by h. These, of course, cancel, and so I'll have 32, oops, ah plus 16 h squared all over h. Here I can factor out an h and get rid of it. And so I get 32 a plus 16 h. Okay. Um, and so this is the average rate of change for any any value for any any h value I move. Okay. From a. So, um, and here we took the limit as h goes to zero, the instantaneous rate of change always in this case would be 32a, um, but you'll do that in calculus. All right, so let's do this once more with this function, and then we'll do rates of change in the thing, we'll call it good. All right, so here if I have a linear, if I have a linear function, so here, we're going to find the rate of change between 3 and 8. And so the f of 8 minus f of 3 all over 8 minus 3, which of course is equal to, I'll just plug it in, 2 times 8 minus, or plus 4 minus the quantity of 2 times 3 plus 4 all over five. Hold on. Okay. So here, so two times eight is, two times eight is 16 plus four would be 20. 20 minus, um, 10 all over 5, which is equal to 2. Okay, so go ahead and try this one, please. Do this one, tell me what you guys get. Let me zoom out for a second, so that way you can see what I did up here. So go ahead and try the A plus H for this one, because you're going to have to do this on your homework for more interesting things. Um, give that a try and see if you can give me a solution. Put the first, the first little hint for it. F of a all over a plus h minus a. a ASMR. Two. <coughs> All right, so someone got two, someone got AMSR, which I don't, maybe I just don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyone else get anything else? I'll give you guys like another minute, then I'll just crunch through it. No, it looks like only one person's going to play. Fair enough. I'm not going to make you all wait, but it'd be good to have, next time we'll make sure you have stuff to run. So if we kind of show this real quick, we're going to have, <clears throat> I'm just my voice, two of A plus H is four minus the 
quantity of two times a plus four over h. So I have two a h or two two a plus two h plus four minus two a minus four. Okay, remember to distribute your negative. So these cancel, those cancel. So I have two h over h, which of course is two. Now, why does the rate of change mean two make a whole lot of uh, make a whole lot of sense? Because what's the slope? This is linear, and the slope is two, right? So if between any two points, no matter where I pick, the secant line is the line, and the slope of that line is always going to be two. So um, yeah, this is just a line, and so. Any two points, it doesn't matter where I pull them from, right? The, the average rate of change is always just going to be the slope between those two points, which is on the line, which is always two. Okay. We could have just skipped doing all that then. That is correct. <laughs> but I want you to go through the practice of doing this um, because on your homework, which I'll show you, um, it's, it's important. Um, it's very important for calculus. You'll do this for like a week straight. And it gets way, way more ugly in calculus. Okay. All right, so let's just do this real quick. So we're going to just do average rate of change. This time I made it very clear. We're just doing four times. All right. So let's do the average rate of change here. So the first one we're going to do is between uh, June 28th at 6 a.m. So right here. Um, here to 6 p.m., which is here. And so here would be our secant line for that. And so f of f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Well, how many go well, here? We could actually do this, but we're actually going to just crunch out what that is. Well, that's just 12 hours, right? That's that's what transpired here. If I go from a.m. to p.m., 12 hours is a surprise here. Um, let's see, hold on. There's something I'm not understanding. I'm kind of slow at this thing. Uh, we can do another one of these before, before the end of the day. I'll, let, let's actually do another one of those before the end of the day for the, uh, for the T minus A. We'll do, I'll do one with you. I'll make sure to do an extra one with you. Um, cause we got loads of time. Okay. Um, so here we're just doing rise over run instead of actually crunching the numbers. Let me just finish this and then we'll do another one just to get you ready for the homework. Um, so here we're doing rise over run. So this has been 12 hours. And then here, um, we've gone from 75 degrees. At least that's what we've labeled it here. And this is really close. So I'll just say 99 degrees. Um, so that gives me 24 degrees Fahrenheit over 12 hours. And so my average rate of change here is about two degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Okay. And so that's my average rate of change. So everyone following how I got to this right here? Yes, no, maybe. I got a ditto. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, which is good to know. So if you're doing if you're doing work outside during the summer, start at six a.m. and then every hour you wait, you're getting two degrees hotter. Okay. Um, let's do the next one. So here we're just going to do an over an hour span, and so this is between eleven a.m. and uh, twelve p.m. So here, uh, put that here, that here, make that roughly what we have. Um, so I'm gonna say, so here I'm gonna say that's roughly at 12 p.m. I'm gonna say that's 95 because it's on the line. I'm gonna say this is 94 because it's on the line. Um, and then my change here is one hour. And so here my average rate of change is about one degree Fahrenheit per hour. Um, which is because this, the slope of this line, oops, I, I can hit it at all, is a little bit flatter than this one. And so 
even though it's in the same time frame, the slope here is not quite this one. And so this one's better for long terms. This is better instantaneously around midday. Uh, let's do let's do this one. So we're gonna go from let me zoom out just a bit so we can see. So we're gonna go from 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. So this would be 5 p.m. here to 5 p.m. here. Let's just say that's 100. Let's make our life easy. And we'll say that's 98. So here, we'll say this was 100 here at 5 p.m. on the 28th. We'll say that this was 98. And here we're gonna say 24 hours, right? And so if I crunch through that, I get two over 24. Um, which is a 12. Uh, degree Fahrenheit per hour. Now, does this make a lot of sense here? So, so is the average rate of change? Well, yeah, if I draw my little secant line, it looks like I've gone up one twelfth degree per hour. But that doesn't, let's just say that's, if I was reporting that, that's bad. <laughs> uh, a bad way of describing this because it's massively moved. Now, if I said two degrees, uh, two degrees Fahrenheit per day, well, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. And so, let's see, what's the old famous Mark Twain quote? There's uh, lies, dang lies, and statistics. And so just be careful because people would say, oh, you know, we just get warmer for every hour. It's like, not really. It's not really describing what's going on. And so be careful with this. And then this one, this one's just a cute little one where we go from here to here. And so even though we're in the middle of the day, um, we went from, I don't know, 92, 92 degrees to 93 degrees in an hour period. And so here I'm about minus one degree Fahrenheit per hour for the rain, which is something to look at. Okay, um, so we still have a little bit of time left in class and you guys want me to do one more of the, of this, right? Okay, so let me show you the homework real quick. Um, and then we'll do one more of those. We may do two. Let me just do, I'll probably do two if you want to show you the homework, 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 homework. Ooh. Ah, here we are. Um, time and smell. <laughs> Not yours. Um, what am I up to? Ah, the homework for today. All right, so the homework for the day, we're gonna just do, you know, identify the where it's increasing min max. We'll do this for three different values. Um, just pick stuff that's close, right? You can average it, but I'm okay with that. Um, here, we'll do a line. You should know what the answers are, but you'll we'll still do it. Here, we're gonna do a quadratic. And so I'll probably do a quadratic with you. And then here, I'm gonna have you guys do something a little bit harder with the square root value. Um, you may not be get, you may not simplify this as much as you simplify the other ones, but go ahead and just crunch through the math all the same. And then here we'll have a rational function. So these are so these would be the two hard problems for the day. I mean, the plugging in numbers you should be okay with. The actual a plus h might be a little bit harder. So let's do let's do a quadratic with you. So let me just make up a quadratic and let me open up a new one. Okay. All right. Um, Hi, Photoshop, no. Da, da, da. Yeah, just so many five times fine. Ta, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so let's just have three x squared plus x plus two. And then we'll actually we'll do two. We'll do minus two x cubed plus one. And we'll do we'll do that for two of them. So we'll have this one and this one. Ooh, this one might get uglier than I hope it to be. It's fine, we'll go through it all the same. Um, so here, if I'm gonna go from t equals a to t equals a plus h, so I'll go a little bit slower this time. So here the average rate of change will be a plus h minus f of a. 
all over a plus h, which is this value here, minus a, which is this value here. We simplify this out. We're going to plug in everywhere we see an x squared. So this would be 3, a plus h squared plus a plus h plus 2 minus the quantity of 3a squared uh, plus a plus 2 all over. And here, this just simplifies to h. Okay. All right, so now we've done this, we're going to have to expand the top. So let's go ahead and do this. So this would be 3. Remember, this is a plus h squared is really a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, oops, squared. Remember to FOIL this, and so I'll have 3a squared plus 2 times 3 will give us 6a8 plus 3 will give us a uh, 3a or 3h, sorry, squared plus a plus h minus 2, and distribute the negative all the way into this. So if we remember to distribute your negative completely, so this would be minus 3a squared minus 3a minus 2 all over h. All right, so once you get to this point, you should be able to cross stuff out. This should be a positive too. Sorry about that. So here, I have a negative 2 and a positive 2. I can cross those two out. This should not be 3. This legit shouldn't be a 3. I'm distributing things that don't exist. The negative goes into here. So I have a, pos a positive A and negative A. I'll have a minus 3A squared and a positive 3A squared. So I cross all that out. So I have 6AH plus 3H squared plus H all over H. And here I'll factor out the H. So I'll have an H times 6A plus 3H plus 1 all over H. Cross out the H and we get our final answer here of 6A plus 3H plus 1. Okay. All right, so we've done that one. Um, I'll still do this one. I'll just have to give me another sheet of paper. New sheet of paper. Uh, new. Okay, new sheet of paper. And so let's do minus 2x cubed. So we'll do something a little bit harder, plus 1. All right, so here we're going to have f of a a plus h minus f of a all over a plus h minus a. And so in this case, we're going to have h on the bottom, like always. We're going to have minus 2 times a plus h cubed plus 1 minus the quantity of 2a cubed plus 1. And so here, this, of course, is a cubed plus 3a squared h plus 3a h squared squared, sorry, plus h cubed. So if we actually expanded that out, that's what you get. I'm not going to give you something that terrible on the exam, but there is some ugly things on the homework, so we'll try it. We'll just go through this. Um, and how I calculated this so fast was have you guys seen this before? The, oops, six, three, and then one. Yeah, so this is how you do this. And so this is the binomial expansion for square. This would be Q, this would be the fourth. Um, and then you just, so here I'll have one, three, three, one. So one, three, three, one. And then you start with A cubed, and then you just slowly bring that down from and then bring h up, so this goes down to two, this goes up, or this goes, yeah, down to two, this goes up to one, this goes down to one, this goes up to two, and this goes down to zero, aka 
nothing. And then this goes up to three. And so once I have all that, I'm going to get out my eraser. Let's make my eraser really big. Right now. All right, so let's go ahead and crunch through this. And so here, we're going to have minus 2 a cubed minus 6 a squared h minus 6 a h squared minus 2 h cubed plus the 1, so plus the 1. So this is all this right here, minus 2 a cubed minus 1 because I'm going to distribute in my negative. So distribute, distribute. So here, also, this was supposed to be minus. Sorry, I didn't carry that over. So that makes this a plus. All over h. You should be able to cancel things. So the 1s cancel. The a's cancel. And so I'm left with minus 6a squared h minus 6ah squared minus 2h cubed all over h, which gives me, um, cancel the h, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. So I get minus 6a squared minus 6ah minus 2h cubed. Okay, does that make sense how to do these? Um, we could do one or two more if you want, um, or I can just let you guys crunch through the homework and you can ask me the questions on tomorrow. Which one do you guys prefer? I mean, you still have 20 minutes of class, but if you guys want to just try it for a while, that's fine. If you want me to do another example, that's fine too. Any votes? A and A? I'm gonna try it on your own. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go a little bit early today. Um, I'll post, I will try to work on the um, posting all the videos and I'll make a, I'll make a, some place to put that. And then I'll try to make also a sample test for you guys tonight. Um, but yeah, everything's here. Good luck, have fun. If you have questions, I'll bring them to me either tomorrow and or Friday, okay? Um, all right, guys, well, good luck, take care. I'm also gonna to try to find all your lost friends because they're still missing some people, as you know. <laughs> Have a good one today, guys. <laughs> Bye. All right, so we stop the screen share and then we go ahead and end.